right, everybody, this is Mark Rogers. He is the creator of Simply Human Lifestyle, which advocates eating, moving, sleeping, and enjoying life like a human. He is a human being, being human. Let's give him a big round of applause, everybody. Thank you for being here. I know there are other very uh, popular people speaking now, so <laughs> thank you for, for coming. I wasn't expecting this many. Um, Imagine with me for a minute that you are standing on a floor of quarters that have been dropped on the floor, okay? And you have 60 seconds to pick up one at a time as many quarters as you can, right? You could probably, and you have to use your hand, so you could probably be pretty efficient uh, at picking up quarters. Like in a minute, I mean, you take that out as an hourly rate, you're probably making a lot of money per hour, right? Now. Let's say you have to do it with this on, right? You could still do it, right? You would not pick up as many quarters, okay? So that illustration is to prove our hand is this unbelievably intricate and efficient gripping mechanism. Like that's what it's for. Its design is to pick things up. I mean, you can use it to, it's very versatile. You can punch and karate chop and things like that. But let's, let's that's the design, right? The glove, is represents sort of modernity, civilization, technology, things that sort of get in the way of our design, okay? So to make the glove more efficient, okay, you can do one of two things. You can do something to the glove. You can either, you can make it tighter. If it's a mitten, you can like cut, you know, fingers into it. You can put little sticky things on it. So you can do something to the glove or you can simply remove the glove, okay? So that's, that's kind of where we're going. So we're gonna look at, well, uh, assuming all parents in the room, is that what, or soon to be, okay. I have uh, four and three year old daughters and my five month old son is over here. My wife is over here too. He just, he just like waved, <laughs> that was really weird. Maybe that was his foot. Um, okay, the Simply Human Lifestyle. I think it's funny when I talk, when people say that I'm the creator of the Simply Human Lifestyle. It's like saying that I created barefoot running. Like you don't really, that's like a, a reduction, okay? So I'm like the destroyer of non-human lifestyle, right? Okay, oh, here, any questions? That's, that's really my whole talk. Uh, that's how you raise kids. You put them in a cage, suspended high above the ground, above some pavement, and that's really it. That, that's a real picture. Did y'all, have y'all ever, have y'all seen that circulating around? They used to do that when the apartments were going so high and they were worried about the kids not getting sunlight and fresh air. So they, they kind of, they kind of had the right concept, it's just, Oh, this makes me, makes me, makes my stomach hurt. Okay, so the four pillars of the Simply Human Lifestyle, and it's very, you know, it, it, it's very uh, overlaps with a lot of the things that you've been hearing this week. Eat like a human, sleep like a human, move like a human, enjoy life like a human. Kids are just small adults, so a lot of these things, all of these things apply to adults too. I would argue for kids that you could add a fifth pillar, like cry for no reason like a human, and maybe like sing Let It Go 1,000 times a day like a human, but that's like... That's a different talk. So these four things. So what we're going to be doing is looking at each of those four pillars. What is the design, right? How are we designed? The conflict of culture, which is the glove, right? It's this thing that kind of gets in the way of that design. What you can do and then what you can remove. And that's uh, Nassim Tlaib, uh, the book Anti-Fragile. He talks about via negativa, which is like the, the, you know, the most brilliant medical uh, breakthrough in the last 60 years was quit smoking. Right? I mean, that's like, ugh, it doesn't take a rocket science to figure that out. I guess it did. Okay, what we won't be covering, but some of the stuff we'll be covering on a panel on Sunday morning with Sarah Ballantine, or Ballantine uh, Sarah Fergoso, Michelle Tam, dealing with parents who don't deprive their kids of a happy childhood by letting them eat ice cream you know, for breakfast, recipes, meal plans, school lunches, grandparents, family members who sneak your kids, Pop-Tarts and Tang. Who remembers Tang, anyone? Yeah, orange Tang, oh man, horrible. Okay. Number one, sleep like a human, our design, okay? Sleep is directly related to light and dark cycles, okay? And Dan Party talks about this. There are other guys talking about sleep. Uh, I, I'm really interested in sleep. Um, the natural light, okay, in our world started out as sun, moon, and stars. The flame came, you know, soon thereafter, relatively speaking, right? So you have your daily light cycle, night, daytime, okay? You have your monthly lunar cycle. So like if you go outside, if all you did was go outside at night when the sun went down, 
as the moon gets, you know, wanes and waxes, there are varying degrees of light at night. And then you have the stars, and then of course the flame, which is an amber, sort of orangish color, right? So melatonin is a very strong, uh, you know it as the sleep hormone. It is also a strong cancer fighter. It does, it's like a super hormone that sort of like gets pigeonholed as the sleep hormone, but it does a lot more things. It's only, it can only be secreted in the absence of light and blue light, okay, or white and blue light. Okay, so think of a sunset. This is actually a sunrise, but that doesn't matter. This is a sunset. The sky goes from a very bright white blue light transitions to an orange, reddish, amberish color. That's, that's the daytime and, and telling your brain that it's time, the lights are about to go off, let's start to you know, secrete melatonin, let's stop the, the secretion of cortisol and some of these other wakefulness things, okay? And then the lights are supposed to go out. Conflict of culture. What is the glove on that design? It is artificial lights after dark. White and blue light in the morning and all day are fantastic. Don't think you have to like be in darkness all the time. You need bright white light and blue light in the morning to get your circadian rhythms going, okay? TVs, computers, iPhone, iPad, Kindle. And what is the best thing to get a kid to shut up? Here, hold iPad, Netflix, YouTube, watch this, be quiet, right? So during the day, that's okay. At night, we need to try to mitigate. We need to do something to that glove, okay? So homework, if you have older kids that have to do homework and they get home and by the time dinner's over, it's dark, then what are you gonna do? Late night activities, you know, baseball games, softball, whatever it is, you're, you're out late, they go to a movie with friends, there's all these things. And then of course, the early mornings of school. You gotta get to work on time, you gotta get your kid up at six o'clock. They had a late night, then their sleep, which is so important, so much more important than human, or not human, adult sleep. Kids really need sleep to, uh, to develop. So what can you do? What can you do to the glove? You can tune in with your natural light cycles, okay? Orange glasses, you've probably seen the blue blockers, okay? My wife wears them. She's breastfeeding that little guy and wears the, the blue blockers at night. And so like, you know, we'll be talking to each other and we, you sort of forget how silly you look. Um, you know, it's like, do the dishes. <laughs> oh, you're wearing orange glasses. You look kind of funny. Um, but candles and tea lights. Okay, we have these things. After dinner, after darkness, okay, and it's a little bit different in the winter when it gets dark at 3 o'clock. You can, you can do like a, we do like a simulated sunset. So we have these little candle lanterns. These little things are super cheap on Amazon. And they're a little, I mean, you can't really see them, obviously, because it's so bright. But these little orange battery-powered tea lights are great. So after dark, this is, this is daddy's light flashlight and I keep it no one takes it so like in the nighttime if I hear dad I gotta go to the bathroom or I had a bad dream or I lost my pony or whatever it is you know I can just I have this thing this is like greatness uh, lowblueLights.com is where I get most of that stuff or Amazon okay um, what so what can you oh set regular bedtimes is another good one not having this sporadic sleep pattern so that's what you can do to the glove what can you remove how can you remove the glove to get back to that design removing artificial light after dark. And it's a transition. It's gonna take some time to get used to, but you get used to that the third time that you step on one of those little Disney princess shoes at night, and it, you know, when you're barefoot in the house, which we'll talk about in a second, you'll learn as you're sort of simulating that sunset to kind of pick up and make everyone clean up and sort of know where everything is so you're not like using this thing to like look around for something that you don't know where it is, right? So you kind of, you adapt. It becomes the new norm, okay? And then uh, you can remove the unpredictable sleep patterns by setting a schedule. And it can be going to bed later in the summer and earlier in the winter if you need to. It doesn't have to be, you know, right when the sun goes down. I mean, that's, you know, the glove is still there, right? But we're just trying to find out ways to make it more efficient. Okay, so that's sleep. And this is a picture of my girl's bunk bed, four and three, which is dark. So I didn't want to, like, take a flash picture. It would have kind of, like, defeated the whole purpose of, you know, moving the artificial light. So that's, that's, like, how they sleep. They go to bed with these things you know, over their head. They need something in the night, and it's not this bright white, uh, you know, night light that's, that'll wake them up. Like, you know, you go to the bathroom, you wake up, you turn the lights on, you can't go back to sleep, right? Then if you don't turn the lights on, you're, you, you have this fear of, like, there maybe a snake has crawled up through the, the toilet. At least I have that fear, but uh, that's, a, that's a different deal. Okay, move. Second one. Human design. And you've heard it all uh, weekend already. Move slow a lot. You're walking briskly, walking, moving, uh, very little sitting, okay? Sitting is not a natural position. Yeah, there you go. Squatting, yeah. 
uh, lifting things. And squatting also for kids when you're going to the bathroom is very important. I know Ben Greenfield talks a lot about pooping and squatting, and you know that's uh, uh, not a very popular subject. But it, when you squat, your colon goes from like this position to this position. It's much more efficient. So my girls squat when they poop, and it's... Yeah, it's, uh, they, they try to do it at school, too, and it's this whole big thing. Okay, so lifting things, okay? Lifting heavy things, short, intense efforts, hanging from stuff, climbing, taking our joints through their full ranges of motion, sitting like this all day, and then going and, like, running for an hour or going, like, and on the treadmill for an hour. That is not a natural movement pattern, okay? Uh, conflict of culture, like I just said, chairs, desks, cars, video games, movies, the fashion, right? The big high heels and all this stuff. I see... I, I see high heels and I'm just like, oh, I'm cringing at what that's doing from a biomechanical standpoint all the way up the whole skeleton. So what can you do? Make movement as much a part of your daily life as you can. Go on family walks. Make it a habit every day, after dinner, before dinner. Everybody goes on a walk. My son, I carry him upright, right? I don't want to just let him you know, hang out in the stroller, not using, not you know, feeling gravity and learning to use his stabilizing muscles, right? Squat a lot. Uh, make going outside a privilege, not a punishment. Create opportunities to move. My girls have a balance beam in the garage. They have a trapeze in their playroom, okay? A no shoes in the house rule is really big. You want them to learn to use the proprioceptors in the bottoms of their feet to connect their neural pathways and make those things strong. A lot of times, this, this collapsed arch isn't a, ma isn't a genetic thing. It's just you haven't used your foot. A quarter of all the muscles and bones in your body are below your ankle, okay? You have this unbelievably intricate system that is supposed to hold up a human body over the course of a lifetime, and no one ever uses them, okay? So don't let your kids wear these huge shoes and never, you know, they'll end up standing. You know, if you, you see kids that stand like this or some of the adults that stand like that, that might be an indication of you've got some, some structural issues, right? You, can, you have to compensate if your feet go out. Now, some, some of it is genetic, not in all cases, but most of the time. So what can you remove? Shoes, whenever possible. Whenever it is humanly possible and they're not gonna get some sort of crazy like cut infection or something, take the shoes off, okay? Um, chairs, couches, in the playroom. If there's a chair and a TV in a kid's playroom or their bedroom, what are they gonna do? They're gonna sit and watch TV. If there's a trapeze hanging from the ceiling, what's a kid gonna do? He's gonna hang and swing from the trapeze and flip over backwards and fall off and get hurt. And it's like, it's perfect, right? So you can move TVs from the playroom and this exercise misconception, we used to have to be fit and healthy f to live and survive in our environment, right? Now it's opposite of that. Now our environment acts contradictory to our health and fitness. So as much as you can make moving a part of your day, try to do it. Anytime you can self-propel yourself to the store you know, on your bike or anything, try to do that with your kids too. Don't, don't just always assume that, you know, like the segways kill me. But um, anyway, um, especially the cops going on segways. What's the cop going to do? Like if he sees someone like steal a purse, you know, it's like... Top speed, well, there, there goes that guy. And then he runs off and he's just going like, to collapse because he hasn't, his legs are asleep. Okay, here's my son watching my four-year-old swing by on the trapeze. So that's their playroom. So just some ideas. And then we go on barefoot walks as much as possible. We have you know, rocks in the front yard. And so they're crawling with barefoot on rocks. I mean, that is, you know, do that as much as you, you can, even if it's five minutes. Um, okay, eat. And this is a, such a big one. I feel like, you know, th there's this so much here that I'm, you know, 20 minutes is like no time. So there's a website and you can come talk to me afterwards on most of this stuff. But okay, human design, our hand for eating, right? It's pretty, it's pretty simple, right? We make it, like, that's, that's the whole simply human thing. It's like we make it way too complex. So we're like, I, I love the science, but you don't need to know the science. I love Jonathan Baylor's deal about, you know, we, we didn't all get fat until we knew what a calorie was, right? You don't need to know the science, okay? So Eat things found in nature. Don't eat things not found in nature. But sugar's in nature, Mark. Ha ha, yes it is. But to eat the amount of sugar that is in one Coke, you'd have to eat through four feet of sugar cane, right? So that's not natural. So, you know, so, you, know you can make your arguments if you're that like dead set on eating four feet of sugar cane, go for it. Conflict of culture, obviously we all know this stuff. Industrialization of food, processed food, food prices. Oh, but it's cheaper to eat crap, right? And paleo, eating organic you know, liver is too expensive. It's not, we can talk about that you know, later. Um, 
advertising to kids. Have you all seen the thing about the, the cereal boxes, all the characters on the cereal boxes where their eyes are looking down? It's really kind of creepy because, you know, then it shows like this article showed like what would it look like if they were just normal eyes. And then when you look at it, like they're looking down at your kids. Like, oh man, and I ate some Lucky Charms growing up too. I mean, Frosted Flakes. I mean, what kid's not going to look up and see like Toucan Sam like looking down like, he sees me. I must eat his, his rings of deliciousness. Okay, so advertising. Okay, parties, holidays, special occasions. This is a big one and one that we're going to cover in a lot more detail on Sunday. So what can you do? Okay, I always tell people, you know, like I, I get the argument, well, my... My granddad smoked and, and drank and all that, and, and he lived in such and such. Yes, but your granddad, you know, probably like grew up like on a farm and ate, had a foundation of real food, right? Then he got sick and everything with, after he started eating the, the industrialized food and the processed food. Kids today don't even have that, that foundation. They don't even have real food. That, I mean, how many kids I see when I take the girls to school that are eating powdered donuts every morning? I'm not saying powdered donuts every now and then as a treat is okay, but every morning you're not giving your kids a foundation. Set boundaries. Uh, my girls, they get a little uh, sucker at the end of gymnastics. They know to hang on to the sucker, and we're going to, I don't not let them eat the sucker, but they're going to eat the sucker after dinner, right? So they know, like talk to them about it. Communicate with your kids. Tell them that broccoli makes you strong and that bare feet on hard ground makes you strong and that all the gymnasts that they're watching on TV, like they have very strong feet and, you know, talk to them about what makes them strong, what makes them weak without them, you know, going off and like seeing someone in shoes and be like, you have weak feet. My dad says you're going to die, you know, so <laughs> that happens uh, some. So don't give up on them. You know, don't just be like, well, my kid wouldn't eat grass fed beef liver. So here's some macaroni and cheese. Like you've got to give it, give them a chance, especially like, I love having a little clean slate five-month-old. Like, the first food he's going to eat is grass-fed liver cooked in bone broth and, like, soft-boiled egg yolks. I'm, like, so excited to not, like, just, like, try to shove rice cereal down his face, you know? Like, it, it's so fun. Uh, so, but don't give up on them. If, they, if you're in a transition and they're going to fight you, if, if you've got stuff in your pantry and you've had it, it's going to be... It's going to be tricky, and we can talk more about some of those things if, you, if you're in that situation. Um, have an occasional treat for crying out loud. Let's, I think I have a picture. Yeah, we go to Jason's Deli after gymnastics, and they, they get an ice cream, right? It's once a week, though, right? So don't. This is the thing. So things you can remove, processed foods from your home, get, get them out of the house, okay? Consistent dining out, like once in a while. I think we probably eat out twice a week, max Sunday night and then Monday night after uh, gymnastics is like the only times that we eat out. That's, that saves money too. And then feelings of guilt or shame around food is kind of a big one, especially with girls. Um, that, that, and that's a whole separate one hour uh, talk that I could give. But okay, so here, my wife and I, like this pie chart, okay, this is human food, right? This is stuff that it is real food, food found in nature. Then you have the non human food. And what we try to think of when we have no processed food, no crap in the house, there are no less than five national candy holidays, right? At least five. Then you have their birthday, and you have all their friends' birthdays, and you have like social butterfly kids. They've got like 57 birthday parties you have to try to navigate through. So this, this line, that, that piece of the pie, if you've got stuff in your home and you're eating out a lot, with all this other stuff, it's like you, you don't want to be that parent that's like, you can't have this Valentine's Day cupcake like at the Valentine's Day party. You might be, and if that's... That's okay, but if you want to have them, give them an occasional treat, make it an occasional treat by keeping everything else in like their daily routine. Make, make uh, every now and then, actually every now and then. I think we've, we've changed the definition of moderation in our society. Like, moderation is one bowl of ice cream after every meal. That's moderate, right? Yeah. Okay, last one. Enjoy. The, the design, the hand, short bouts of stress followed by recovery and relaxation, right? That's how we're designed to manage stress. And there's people that can talk uh, more about that as well. Dopamine is a big one. We have this thing in our brain, this pleasure reward system, okay? Laughter as medicine. So we're supposed to enjoy and, and enjoy life, right? Conflict of culture. It's like all these select teams and the travel and the practice every night and making play a job, right? The, you see high school kids that are burnt out. 
because it's it's you get wrapped up in the competition and well his friends are doing little league six days a week and then within that six days they've also got this other thing they're doing six days a week so just be really careful not to make it a job and not to burn them out um, what can you do and, and if you don't hear anything I say this whole talk remember this the kid that eats perfect that sleeps perfect that moves perfect and and isn't loved isn't cared for is not is, is better off, or is worse off, than the kid that eats crap, doesn't have good sleep patterns, moves, sits in a chair all day, and nobody cares for him, nobody spends time for him. You hear me on that one? Does that make sense? Okay, and she just talked about it on the stage before this, like attachment breeds maturation and, and development, right? So spend time with your kids. That is the most important thing you can do for your kids right there. If you're gonna let them eat crap, fine. Spend time with them, okay? Let them play. Don't get caught up in the competing. Go outside. Have an ice cream once in a while. We get snow like once every three years. So make a snowman, and then you can cut your head off of the thing. And so it's just all about the kids. And that was great, because I was outside. That thing was heavy, and I was out like moving and enjoying life. It was sort of, I was getting all the things in one. Uh, you know, have fun. I'm just kind of throwing out. Those are my daughters. And there's a baby in a bucket. If you need to work out, and you don't have a place to put your baby, put him in a bucket. And last thing, happy Easter. <laughs> so embarrassing, I know. So thank you, I guess, yeah, thank questions. Thank you. Yes, does anybody have any questions? 2025, that's pretty good. And I know Rob Wolf is talking soon, so. Well, first of all, I'd just like to say thank you. Yeah. I uh, really appreciate your talk. Uh, one thing I really liked about what you said was the importance of sometimes allowing your kids to eat something that is what you're terming non-human. Um, and I think there are cultural reasons for that. Also, uh, instilling them this notion of how to be hospitable and to receive, uh, for instance, at a stranger's house. Um, but something that we've noticed as well, and I'm, I'm curious if you've experienced this, you have a family that's really uh, the same age as ours, uh, children about the same age too. When we transitioned into paleo, um, and we basically cut out almost 100% all of the, the non-human food, all the processed food, what we found was that when we actually had that rare occasion where we went back, our children had almost like an allergic reaction, a much stronger reaction to processed food than we'd ever seen before when their bodies were used to it. And so one concern I have for my children is, there could very well be a time in the future where they have to eat processed food or they need, you know, whatever, they're not able to eat great food. I want them to be able, I want them to have strong bodies, which can be adaptable. Take that, right, exactly. Right. They can take that kind of pressure. And I'm worried that if you're 100% paleo all the time, you can't do that. Is that, have you had any kind of experience that confirms that? Um, I, I mean, we, we have that talk. I mean, it's like, you know, with the whole sleep thing and the light thing, you know, if there's a night that, you know, they're up playing and like the grandparents are over, it's Christmas. I'm not, you know, I actually did do this, uh, but they made me, I went over to like turn the Christmas tree off. <laughs> After dark, my mom was like, turn that back on right now. So, you know, so that kind of thing, like, they have to be adaptable. So every day, it's like, you don't want that one time that, they're, that they get exposed to light at 9 o'clock. They don't sleep that night, and then they get sick. And then, you know, so they, the kids need to be adaptable. So I think, yeah, having, like, that sort of that idea of hormesis that Rob Wolf talks about, this sort of small dose stuff to make you stronger to it. And Paul Jaminé uh, sort of taught me that kids from a, from a cellular level, let's say kids have this many cells, right, and they eat this much food. So there's, there's some wiggle room in there, and they need extra, some extra glucose and carbohydrates for their development and stuff. Whereas old people, like older than all of y'all, like we're still young, old people are like have this many cells, and they eat this much food. Right? So they don't have as much wiggle room. So kids, there's a little wiggle room in there, but you have to make sure that that little wiggle room doesn't take up half of the, the pie chart. Haha, <laughs> pie chart. Pun intended. Got it? Pie. Okay. Are there any questions? Any other questions? Oh. I was Will, yes. Yeah, I was just wondering where you got the, the blue light blockers and where, where we can find all that stuff, your little flashlight and things yes, like that. Yes, okay, so these glasses, these are the Uvex, and you just put in like, blue, like orange glasses in Amazon, and these will come up, and they're like 10 bucks. Okay, you can go to low blue light, and, and uh, you go to lowblueLights.com. Okay, and that's where I get, and this is Amazon too. Coleman candle lantern. You cannot find these at like REI or Academy. 
they have the only lights I've ever found, headlamps and stuff, are these bright white lights, right? So, but oh, these are so great, and the girls love them, and sometimes they burn themselves, and guess what? That's a lesson, right? So. <laughs> These, these are on Amazon, and you can get little submersible ones, too. So you can, like, put them in the bath, which is a lot of fun. You know, like, they're, like, playing with these, like, and then it changes the water, and it makes it, like, a fun thing. It's so much easier when it stays lighter longer, because, like, when we start bath, like, 7.15, we don't have to do all the lights because it's still light, and that's really easy. So um, lowbluelights.com is great. Uh, I don't have any sort of, in, you know, invest, investment with them. I wish I did. Um, but uh, yeah, and then so the lowbluelights.com glasses are a little bit more expensive, but those have been tested in like a NASA laboratory. So of course I'm the sucker who buys like the the you know, more expensive ones. But you know I, I want to make sure that you know I'm not getting any wider blue lights. So like last night, you know we were out late, came back and I had them with me. We drove back to the hotel. I put them on and you know started my melatonin secretion. That sounds really gross. <laughs> we got one more question, okay? How did you attach the trapeze to the ceiling? Good question. Okay, that their playroom was my CrossFit gym. Now it's a playroom, right? So my gym got moved outside. So when we built the house, we put and you can you don't have to build the house to do this, but you can put we had like a 4 by 4 piece of green wood like a, on top of the two supporting walls. And then we just drilled, I have like a, from againfaster.com, I had the, uh, the apparatus that the, the rings hang from. And there were four holes that we just went all the way through that piece of green wood and attached it on the top. It was, it was really like, I'm not like an engineer by any means, but it was actually really easy to do. And I have a buddy who, who played college ball with that he's like 300 pounds and he got on there like, and it didn't budge. So yeah, it's cool. And then balance beam is like super easy to make, yeah. I'm going to take credit for that. Yeah, trapezes. Are, and you can do the rings, and they swing from the rings. And I always have it, like, right above their heads because those things are heavy. So, like, if they ever do, like, let go, it, it won't, you know, knock them unconscious. But. Thank you. Round of applause for Mark. Thank you very Thank much you. for coming. Yeah, this is great.